Hey everybody, surprise! There's an unscheduled live stream. Well, I don't know how often I really schedule them, but I thought it would be fun to do kind of an impromptu live stream at a time different than I normally do. So let me adjust this a little bit. There we go. So hopefully people in other time zones might be able to watch the live stream. Uh, Mostly what I wanted to do is catch up with you on a few things and uh, kind of show you what I'm doing this week. First of all, I, I have some notes here I want to talk to you about. Hey, Evan. Hey, Mark. Hey, oh, well, God, now everybody's, everybody's showing up. Hey, somebody from Italy. Good. Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome again to my live stream. If you're just joining me, I just started just a couple minutes ago, and it's at an unusual time this week just so that other people in other countries maybe might be able to see the live stream. Uh, first of all, I wanted to, let's see, updates. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of scattered today because I, I've been working on a project like all day long. I've been working on this thing. It's one of these, what I call a, is it skill building? No, not the skill, but you know, skill building. Is that what I call them? See, I can't even remember what I call No, the Step It Up Project. You know, it's like the next level woodworking. That's what uh, I'm working on right now. So it's these, it's a type of picture frame. I'm putting some splines in there now, but I'll show you more about that in a second. Uh, first of all, I wanted to mention to all of you that I'm, you hear that plane? Never fails. <laughs> it always gets loud. As soon as I want to say something, either barking dogs, leaf blowers, something. Uh, I wanted to tell you, I'm not gonna have a video this Friday because tomorrow, uh, tomorrow because I'm leaving, I'll be out of town uh, tomorrow through Sunday for my mom's memorial out in, in Colorado. So then when I get back next week, I've got like two days in the shop to hopefully finish up this project and I don't think I'm gonna have time to edit it though. And then Wyatt and I are going down to VidCon down in Anaheim. So if any of you are in the LA area and want to drop by and say hi, uh, I'd love to. I'd love to meet you. That should be fun. Uh, we always enjoy doing that. So it's a busy couple weeks coming up. If I everything works according to plan, I should be able to have a project video a week from tomorrow, but not tomorrow. And I also wanted to catch you up with kind of my sporadic upload schedule lately. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm working on thinking about coming up this online woodworking course. And basically it's just so many people have been asking me to come up with this kind of a thing because I don't have enough time in my videos to really show how to do projects. You know what I mean? I, I feel like I, I'm getting the information out there, but it's so condensed that people who really are interested in learning, and I know this isn't going to be for everybody because a lot of a lot of you just like to watch just to watch for inspiration and just to get ideas. But for those of you who really want to take a woodworking course from A to Z and completely comprehensive, that's the idea that I'm coming up with. And so I've been working on that actually for several months now but i'm at the stage now where i really need your input and that's why the title of this video says that the survey is online because i have a woodworking survey that i really would love to have you participate in it's only going to take you like three minutes uh there's a link in the description of this live stream i think if i did it right if not I'll post it on there after I'm done with the live stream. But there should be a link in, in the live stream that just takes you right to that survey. So if you could please fill out that survey. I'm trying to get an idea who everybody is, kind of your skill levels, what woodworking means to you, and getting some demographics, that sort of thing. Uh, really appreciate your help with that. I also wanted to mention that we've reinstituted the $10 Patreon level uh, over on Patreon, I, I, before I wasn't really sure what to do with that $10 level, so I stopped doing it and I only did the $5 and, and the $2. But we decided for people who want to do the $10 a month Patreon donations, is that what you call it? 
it's uh, we're gonna be doing a live hangout. So whoever's on there once a month will get together. I don't even know if Google still does hangouts. We'll use some other system probably through YouTube. I'm not really sure. We'll figure out the logistics of that so that we can all get together and we can talk woodworking or whatever else you want to talk about for um, for an hour or so. And so again, that's for $10 patrons and higher. I also wanted to mention, I'm just really going through a whole list of things here. I wanted to mention the Woodworking for Mere Mortals newsletter. For those of you who don't know, I have this weekly newsletter that comes out maybe two or three times a month, <laughs> maybe two times a month. Uh, but I try to keep everybody up to date with what's going on in there. I'd love to have you subscribe to that. It's free. There's also a link in the description, or if it's not there, I'll post it there after, after this live stream is done on the replay version. So sign up for the Mimo Memo. And plus, I like to post pictures on there from viewers who post their own projects over on the website. It's kind of a fun way to see what everybody's doing. I've gotten some ideas for projects based on things that other people have posted. So that's really cool. And finally, I wanted to ask you to follow me on Instagram if you don't already do that, because it's also a great way to keep up with what I'm doing in this shop. And the only reason I'm mentioning all of this is just because my schedule, my weekly posting schedule has been pared down a little bit, so I'm not able to post every single Friday. But you can still keep up with me, and I'm still like more busy than ever, actually. Uh, there we go. Covered all of the covered all of the business right there. Uh, let me show you the project I'm working on this week. Is I, I think you might find this kind of cool what I'm doing. First, I'll show you the picture. This is the. You, you might have seen these before. These are these wrap around picture frames. So in other words, this one would go around the a corner of a wall, and this one would go on the inside corner of a wall. I haven't figured out yet what picture would look really cool in there, but this has been posing all kinds of logistical problems. And it really is always these projects that kind of look simple on the outset that always uh, just one thing after another. Mainly it's, well, I knew right away this was going to be a problem here because there's no support in that middle. And the miters on the sides there's, it, it's difficult to, it's okay to glue it, but it's difficult to clamp it up. So I wasn't really able to clamp those miters. I'll show you where I'm at so far. So I've made this piece like this, and I glued the miters together without clamping them. I just kind of pressed them together and I put a clamp on the miter just to kind of hold them flush together. So I figured I would do these two parts first and then and it, it's also weird because you've got the miters going this way but you have to have a bevel on this side okay so then this will come together like like that so there's the the odd this is this would be the inside corner picture frame so i put the splines in here i just got done cutting these splines to try to give it some more strength I hope it's strong enough. I don't know, a lot of this is, is very experimental. But I think it should look pretty cool. Now the other part about this is the glass. Of course I'm not gonna use real glass because of the way it bends. And I didn't want just two pieces of glass with a seam down it. So I did a test with plexiglass bending it. So this is just acrylic. And I've just put a board on one side, clamped it, clamp this down and then kind of held the board against it and used a heat gun to just heat this up and then slowly bend it. It's kind of interesting because it, it doesn't bend at first and then all of a sudden it just gets hot enough and it just, it bends really easily. But it's, I think I heated it too much so it's got a weird curve here. Again, this was just a test. I haven't done the actual pieces yet. But I think it'll be cool if that's if that works out. You know, that's gonna that will go inside. Look at that. It actually fits in there. I didn't even plan <laughs> I didn't even plan on that. I didn't know that. So it would go in like something like that and wrap around. I don't know. It's hard to kind of imagine this right now. But I don't know. This is one of those projects that, you know, it's kind of a uh, just a test of your 
courage, not courage, willpower, <laughs> whether you want to see it through or not. Because I'm at the point now where I'm halfway through this and I'm like, oh man, I'm kind of getting tired of working on this thing. I'm having a lot of troubles with it. One of the things I did wrong was I cut all the miters and the bevels the exact same on each board. Half of them have to be the opposite. I don't know. These are things that didn't come up until I'm actually trying to assemble it. Even in my, even in my SketchUp file, the way I had it, it made perfect sense to me to cut them the weird way that I did, but sometimes the real world works out better than the 3D SketchUp versions of the world. Uh, so that's what's going on in the shop. I'm also shooting a video for the miter, not miter jig, the uh, spine cutting jig. And you guys might have seen me use it before. Let me go get it. This is this is my spline cutting jig and this is a one I just made and I hope to have just a quick video out on that pretty soon too it's like the world's easiest spline jig so it's just two pieces of wood and you know what they don't even really have to be 45 degree angles they don't have to be perfect 90s here it doesn't really matter when you're making splines so to cut the splines well I've got splines glued up in here but you just drop your picture frame down in there and then this part runs along the fence, your rip fence, and then it just cuts the splines right there. So it's kind of cool, but I'll, I'll show you more about that when I get the video going. Uh, is that it? Oh, I know what I wanted to mention also, and it's actually on my list here. I wanted to mention Maker's Care this year is coming up and that is going to be September 15th is when the start date of that and this year we've decided to team up with the Children's Miracle Network instead of uh, instead of the Make-A-Wish Foundation it, it, there's nothing there's no controversy here or anything I still love the Make-A-Wish Foundation it's just I thought it would be fun to try something different and the Ch Children's Miracle Network is, is interesting to me because when you make a donation, anybody makes a donation, you can choose your closest children's hospital to you. There's, there's a few hundred of them so that the, the money you donate goes locally. And I thought that was really cool. So that's what the, the charity is going to be that we're, we're going to be building projects for this year. But I wanted to give you a sneak preview because we're going to be building toys. And I, I haven't told anybody else about this. So you guys are the first to hear this. And it's going to be a Every year we have a theme. The theme this year is probably going to be uh, make, make time for play. I think that's what we came up with. Make time for play or make time for fun. Something like that. So we're, you know, we're incorporating the make part of it and then the, the playing part of it. So there's going to be toys. So if you want to start thinking about toys you can make, you have a lot of time before September 15th. And that's when it starts. That'll run for a month up until mid-October. And I hope we can hope we can raise a lot of money this year. We should have some good prizes and sponsors on board too. That's all I have. I'm going to go through and answer some of your questions real quick. Also, don't forget, if you're just joining me, that I've got a survey online woodworking survey it would really help me out if you would take that survey and let's see if i can get this woodworking course going all right i have to i have to use my old man glasses okay uh i'm gonna scroll back through some of the comments and uh Wemja, love the new charity uh, thank you. Oops. <laughs> uh, wow, I wish we could take care of some of the spam on here. I'm sorry, guys. I I don't know. I, don't, I really don't understand it at all. Uh, I, was, I was hoping Wyatt could help me out with this. I think he's he must be busy doing something to ban some of these people. It's very frustrating. Uh, wow, this is just nothing but spam in here. This is really frustrating. 
Um, wow, I did not know it would be like that. Uh, okay, I think maybe, maybe Wyatt's working on this. I don't know. Maybe so. Does it look like I can ban people from my phone app? I haven't figured out how to do that. Uh, okay. It looks like they're they're thinning out. So, oh, there's Wyatt. Wyatt is here. <laughs> Yay, Wyatt! <laughs> he, <laughs> the, I'm really glad he's here because that was really kind of getting crazy. Oh, okay. Sorry, everybody, about the spam. I I don't know how that happens. The, the crazy thing about the spam is. Uh, does it work? I mean, really? Has anybody in the world ever bought something or made a transaction based on spam? It just seems like the most ineffective way to market anything. I don't know. Okay, enough of that. Let's let's get on with some stuff. Uh, Blake saying hi to Wyatt. Thank you, Wyatt, for joining us. Uh, Crod says it never works. Yeah, of course it doesn't. I don't know. Uh, okay, actually getting some questions here now. How often do I change my table saw blades? That is a good question because I, I get that question fairly often and I don't probably, I probably don't change them as often as I should. I, I use one blade. It's just a general purpose blade uh, yeah, that's what they're called, general purpose. It, it's, hang on one second. It's coming back. I'm still here. 32 teeth, 32 teeth blade, and it, it just cuts through everything. I know some people recommend having multiple blades for different kinds of cuts or plywood, and maybe for some plywood, if it's a real expensive plywood, I might use a finer tooth blade. But in general, I find that the general purpose blade works for everything and the, I don't change it very often. And I probably should. I never realize when it's getting dull. It's one of those things that just slowly happens until eventually it just kind of hits me that I kind of think, wow, you know, this is the wood's really going through slow and it's maybe, I don't know, it just doesn't feel right. Then when I get a brand new table saw blade and I put it in there, it's like night and day. I think, God, I should have changed this thing, you know, a month ago. But because there's nothing like a brand new table saw blade. It just, it's so nice. Uh, Eddie Murphy, love all your videos. You've given me so many ideas on what and how to do things. Uh, thanks, Eddie. Appreciate that. Uh, Can I do decent woodworking? This is from Michael C. Can I do decent woodworking using a contractor's mobile table saw? Yeah, of course. I, I used one. I mean, it's sort of kind of what I have, really. Mine's kind of, it, it looks a lot bigger than it is. But I, I used a, a little craftsman portable saw. It's basically a tabletop saw for years. I mean, it worked. It's not the best. I mean, it's obviously the, the more you spend on a saw, the easier it's going to be to use, but it still works. It's just a blade that spins. So as long as you can get accurate cuts, and that just takes a, a matter of time getting used to your rip fence and your miter gauge, uh, and you'll, you'll do fine with it, yeah. Uh, Ala El Wakil, greetings from Egypt, 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 greetings. Egypt is one of those places in the world that, man, would I love to visit Egypt someday. Just to see, see the pyramids. Uh, let's see, Land of Loaf. Hey Steve, want to share with you, to try and maybe even share it with your viewers. I use this a lot, a DIY wood stain, okay. One part white vinegar, one part peroxide, and a few wire nails. Leave it overnight. That sounds like 
uh, yeah, it, it's like oxidizing. I think you can do that with uh, steel wool also. You put steel wool in vinegar and it just it makes this really nice dark stain. I haven't tried it before. Everybody always recommends that I try doing that, but I haven't heard about using it with peroxide, so I'm sure there's some science behind that too. Uh, do I ever sharpen any of my blades? Not my saw blades, no. I don't. I, I think the only time it would be worth sharpening saw blades is if you're buying one of those two or three hundred dollar table saw blades, but I don't. I just buy like the I don't know, twenty dollar ones or something. And I, I probably get a year out of a saw blade. I mean, I really use a saw blade a long time. Uh, what do you think about, oh, this is from Go Go ZRX. What do you think about end grain in a planer? Because that's kind of a controversial uh, subject because the idea here is that if you are let me grab a board planing wood on a, a surface planer you just put it in and it runs through and it has blades that are spinning this way and it, it does a great job on the face of a board which is you know where the grain goes this way but what he's asking is and it's this is usually comes up when people make end grain cutting boards and when they get the end grain they want to know if they can run that through the planer yeah i think you can i personally haven't done it because i'm kind of scared to do it because i've heard horror stories about people doing that and not necessarily too much of a safety issue but just destroying your workpiece because the the blades spinning get caught in that end grain and just kind of explode it but I've heard people say that you can do it as long as you take super, super thin passes with that planer. And that seems to make sense to me. And for an end grain cutting board, they should be pretty level to begin with. You're really just trying to plane off the glue and maybe just a little bit. I don't know. I You can give it a try. You know, what's the worst that can happen? It's going to ruin your project, I guess. I would, I would rather just sand. A lot of sanding is a little bit less nerve-wracking, I guess. Uh, Angus says he's not going to be in his shop for about six months. Should I do anything more than just wax the cast iron to protect my tools? No, that's all I would do. Just You can get waxed. Yeah, they can actually buy, I think, Woodcraft or Rockler spell, sells special waxes or oils or something you can you can put on for that but I don't know I think just any kind of paste wax would be fine and you know a little bit of rust on the top of your tabletop isn't, isn't really gonna hurt it you just sand it off and it's no big deal the, the biggest problem I think with rust on tabletops is that aside from the comments I get on my YouTube videos the worst part is that sometimes it can leave that rusty stuff the rust on your wood which usually isn't that big of a deal because I'm going to be sanding the wood down anyway. But I think if you had some serious rust problem, then it, it might be able to damage the, the metal. I don't know. Thomas says, I should podcast. <laughs> I've actually thought about doing that, but I just don't think I have time. Everybody has a podcast these days. It? it seems like that. There's a lot of podcasts out there. I don't really, I'm not really a podcast listener to. Sometimes I listen to them. I, I listen to them if it's a topic that I know or somebody sends me, hey, you got to listen to this, this episode of a certain podcast and I'll listen to it. But I'm not a regular listener really of any podcast. Uh... Uh, Horn Blower Tom says, Steve, what would you recommend I do about a crappy table saw fence? Uh, the only thing I know to do is to buy a better one. I don't think you can, I don't know if there's much you can do because most low end table saws have crappy rip fences. And, but I used a crappy rip fence on a table saw for a long time. And I just got to where I would measure 
the distance of the fence to the blade from the front of the blade and the back of the blade and made sure that it was parallel. It was kind of a weird workaround. I'm, I'm glad I don't have to do that anymore, but I think that that's kind of the one upgrade I, I would recommend is a new rip fence. Not so much with the miter gauge, but rip fence, definitely. Uh. Hey, Pablo Rod says, you're the reason I started woodworking. Thanks for the helpful videos. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for, thanks for watching. Uh, Brian says, thanks for doing the live show later in the day. I missed the past few due to work. Yeah, that's why I wanted to do this later on the day. Maybe, I hope this summer I can just start to do some of these live streams at times, really different times throughout the day. Maybe, you know, like at nine o'clock at night or some, my time so that in Europe it would be daylight. Uh... Andrew wants to know, have I considered doing more of my basics lines of, line of videos? Yeah, I mean, I did one last week, the basics uh, video for... God, I, I can't remember things that just happened last week. But the, my basics videos are some of my most popular videos. Yeah, people really, really love those videos a lot. So I'll be doing more of that basics series. I really like doing it because it's good. I think it's just a good resource for anybody who has questions about something basic, I can just say, well, here, go watch this video. I've already covered this. And it, it also saves me time during my regular project videos that I don't have to take the time out to explain certain procedures. I can just refer everybody to the basics videos. Uh, How uh, Jacob wants to know, how do I store wood that is small or extremely long? I don't store extremely long wood. The longest boards I ever get are maybe 8 to 10 feet. These are the longest ones I have in the shop right now just because they were a little bit extra I bought for some project. And they'll just sit there until I start cutting them up into little pieces that I need, need for something. Little pieces are a bigger problem. Everybody has problems throwing away little pieces of wood. I don't have an actual rule of thumb, but it's not really the size that matters. <laughs> it's the amount. And by amount, I mean matching pieces. So if you, have, if you have a small piece of wood that is beautiful, some sort of exotic lumber that's this big, and that's the only piece you have like that, it's probably not worth saving because you'll, you'll never do anything with it. There's nothing really that you can make out of a piece of wood that's that small, aside from maybe turning pins or, or something specialized like that. But if you have a bunch of small pieces that are all kind of of the same die lot, so to speak, then you might want to save them. But I just throw everything, all that away, all those small pieces. Otherwise, you, you'll go crazy with them. I know people who have like, like buckets, not buckets, like trash cans filled with, you know, scrap lumber. And it's just a waste of space because Anything deeper than about this, you'll, you'll never get to again. All of that scrap lumber in the bottom is just taking up space and, and cluttering up your mind. <laughs> okay, let me get back to questions. Hey, Blake said that he just made the paddle boat for his daughter and she really loves it. That's great. That's a, that was really fun. Uh, hey, big screen bird. Hello from the Virgin Islands. Who's that? Who's that? Oh. I just got a note to say, hi, Miles. <laughs> Who's a five-year-old? I wish I could see all of the comments, so that was really nice that my wife brought that note down to me. Uh, <laughs> uh, Electro Buzz, do I do woodworking for mere mortals full time? Yes, I do it more than full time. Uh, 
I'm looking at buying a lathe. What should I look for in a lathe before I buy it? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not very good at a lathe. Uh, I'm not really sure. I would check out Carl Jacobson's videos because he knows so much about lathes and that would be a good resource. For me, my lathe, it just spins. I just need something that spins and I need something that I can adjust the speed on. Um, from my limited knowledge of lathe is that when I start turning wood, when it's rough, I use a low speed and then I speed it up for the other stuff. But anyways, don't know. Uh, Kraus wants to know a question about riving knives. Are they only needed with cuts through the entire thickness or can you use them with rabbit cuts? You don't need them on to making rabbits because the, the blade isn't going all the way through. Just like you said, the blade doesn't go all the way through. I can't really demonstrate that, but if the blade is only going through half of the of the wood, there's really no reason for kickback to occur, which is the big reason why you use a riving knife. Uh, same with dados. With a dado, obviously you can't use a riving knife. You would need like a super thick riving knife. So you have to remove that. But there's, I don't think there's any risk of kickback when you're making dados because the blade isn't coming up out of the, the wood. And rabbits would even be safer because you're running that right along the edge of the board. You hear that? <laughs> My neighbor, <clears throat> he's got this like Mad Max car that he's built. It's this old VW Beetle. It's it's like so awesome looking, but you know it's got skull and crossbones and flags and but it's loud. So that was what that noise was. That's an interesting question from Healer. It says, do you ever go back on any of your projects and modify them? Huh. I don't think I've ever, you mean after it's built, I haven't, but I have modified projects when I've built them the second time. In fact, probably every time I build something a second time, I've modified it. Even this, this spline jig that I built this was the first one I built years ago. I don't remember exactly how I did it, so I just kind of came up with this one, which was, so I'm sure it's modified. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think I've ever built anything the same way twice. Uh, hey, Jason says he just finished the survey. Thanks, Jason. I really, really appreciate your feedback and your input on the survey. For those of you who don't know, I've got a woodworking survey I'd like for you to take. It'll just take you a few minutes. There's a link in the description. Okay, let me see if I can catch up a little bit. Sorry guys, I'm just trying to read through the comments. I know it's not, it's not very exciting watching me scrolling. <laughs> uh, I got a question from the Llama King. Hey Steve, I'm 10 years old. Hey, great. And started watching your videos and then woodworking became my favorite hobby. Thanks. Also, why do some power saws make my wood burn. That's a common problem. There's a couple of things going on. Your saw blade could be a little dull. That happens, that, that can burn wood. Your wood might not, it might be binding a little bit if it's not going smoothly through, that can cause burning. But I think the biggest problem with burning is the type of wood. If it's, I hardly ever get burning on pine. I mean, I, I think I could just, run it through any old way on a really dull blade and it just doesn't seem to burn but maple and cherry burn really easily and by burning I, I, what he means uh, is is not that it's 
burning up, but you get burn marks on it, which are really frustrating, and especially on maple because maple is such a light colored wood. There's, this is a maple with any burn marks. I don't know if this is one that I've cut, but it's such a light colored wood and when you do get a burn mark on there, it's, it shows up so badly. So you have, you have to sand all that down. So those are the things I would look at for trying to alleviate burning. Uh, Aldo wants to know how the princess is. Princess Meow Meow is doing fine. She's kind of lounging around today because it's a hot day. Well, she kind of lounges around every day. That's, that's, that's what she does. Uh, Keith wants to know why I don't use the CNC more. I don't have a CNC. I've never had a CNC. Uh, Hey, Carl. Carl says uh, he never misses an episode. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Our pocket hole, this is from Bobby in our pocket hole joints as strong as dovetail joints. Probably not, I would guess. I mean, dovetail joints are pretty strong, but it's also one of those things you just got to weigh how strong do you need it, you know. I think for if for something like, and you usually see dovetails on drawers because they they get so much use, especially on a, something that's going to be for daily use. That pulling in and out is just a lot of stress on the drawer. So dovetail is a good option there. Uh, but I use pocket holes, pocket screws, just because they're so quick and easy. And for most of the projects I build with drawers, they're not the kind of thing that I. I'm going to open and close them all the time. I have a couple, like my desk drawer, and I didn't use pocket screws on that because I knew that the desk, I would be opening those drawers a lot. So instead I just used rabbits for those. But I'm sure dovetails are stronger and, and they look great. Uh, there's another question, somebody asking me about making a podcast. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I would like to. I just, I wish I had time to do that. My thought of a podcast, I think I've mentioned this before, is, is I think it would be fun to do a podcast where I just record all of the episodes for an entire season and then just psh, release them all at once, kind of like Netflix style, so everybody could just binge listen to them. But that would take me a lot of time. Uh, uh, David wants to know if I have a good sander that doesn't vibrate and kick dust everywhere. D uh, I have to control the dust on every sander I have, but most of, uh, if you're talking about handheld sanders like random orbit sanders, they usually have the, a little dust collection bag that comes with it or some sort of thing, or you can hook up a shop vac to it. Shop vac works better. But you're just going to get sand, sawdust, you know, I mean, it's just going to, it's kind of annoying. The worst offender, I think, would be like a belt sander. Belt sanders just create these clouds of sawdust. But definitely, every time I sand, I use a dust mask. I don't want to be breathing in that stuff. And if I can, I do it outside. The wind just keeps blowing it away. Uh... Oh, this is a callback. This is Wemja says he tried to joint the end grain of a cube once. It somehow caused kickback. The workpiece got damaged, but I still have my fingers. Yeah, through a jointer, I would. I. I don't think I would want to do end grain on a jointer just because there's nothing between you and the lumber. Whereas if on a planer, if it's going through there, to me it seems safer because you would run it through on the side. If anything did kick back, it would just shoot out of the way. But yeah, I, I don't know. I just don't think end grain planing is such a great idea. Or jointing, joining, jointing. Uh, have I ever welded before? No, I would love to learn some welding. I'm just not really sure where, where to even begin with that, but it's on, it's on my list of things I want to do is learn some welding. OK. 
Okay, I'm going to scroll down some more. Um, can you, oh, this is from, I can't think of the, I can't think of nothing. <laughs> That's a great username. Can you plane boards with a router? Yes. That's a lot of work. You can. You, you can build a, a sled that you just ride the router on it. And so you just kind of, you take the router and you just run it back and forth along the, the surface of a board. It rides on the edges of the jig, I guess. J look on YouTube. I'm sure somebody has made a router planing jig that you can, you can copy. Okay. Oh, Captain Dan said he just got a bunch of aromatic cedar today from the local lumberyard. Best, that's the best smelling wood there is. Any good ideas on what to make with it? It looks so cool. I would just use it for using it as just of it. You can use aromatic cedar. You know, it smells so good. And usually people back in the day would line drawers with it. And I think it would probably keep away moths. It's like a moth repellent or something. But I don't think you can, I don't know if I would do that anymore because mostly if you're going to build something out of it, you, you want to have a finish on it. And the finish is going to cover up all of that all of that smell anyway. I would make maybe a chest of drawers would, would be nice and then just put the put the aromatic cedar in the bottom of the drawers without finishing it. Then you can smell it. Uh, uh, Mad Scat wants to know if I can say something about the router I use in the router table what types of routers work best and what doesn't work at all. I've only used a handful of different routers in my life. The one I have in the table, in my router table, is the only router I have right now. And it's the Porter Cable, it, it's their workhorse. It's They've been making that same router for years. I don't remember the model number of it, but I mean, it'll. It's it's gotta be like the most common router there is out there. Uh, God, I wish I could think of the, the model of that. But look for Porter Cable router, and it's kind of your basic router. It's not a plunge router. A lot of people like the plunge routers. I've never really had a need for a plunge router. A plunge router ha is on springs so that you can start it and then push it right through the wood and start your cut. You know, if you're starting, if you need to route something starting in the middle. But I've used my regular one just by kind of tipping it in and it seems to work fine. It's one of those things, I don't know if it's worth the money. Some people like the, the plunge router. So I would just look for a fixed base router. Make sure it has one that has variable speeds to it. But I think, I think they all come with variable speeds now. But I haven't, I've owned a few routers and I've never had any problems with, with any of them. Uh, can you, <laughs> that's, a cool, that's a cool question by, by Avery Nervous, can you identify types of wood by their smell? I can, certain types of wood. I can definitely identify walnut. I can definitely identify pine and oak to some extent. And an aromatic cedar. And I guess that's about it. <laughs> walnut though has a definite strong smell. Oh, and there's also some there's some real specialty woods, like uh, Paduk has a real strong odor to it. Uh, DJ Rusi wants to know if I will do a collab with Matthias Wandel. I've done one with him before. If you haven't seen it, check. It's an old, old video we did for April Fool's Day. Uh, Skype for woodworkers. We had a lot of fun doing that. I'd like to do another uh, collab with him if we could figure out some way of doing it. Most. Woodworking collaborations are kind of hard to do 
online unless you're just going to send the project back and forth. It doesn't really make sense unless you're kind of right together. Or if it's something silly like that April Fool's video we did. Okay. This, this, this is some good watching right here, huh? You're seeing a guy doing this, <laughs> scrolling through comments. Uh, we're still working out all the bugs on this whole system. We'll, we'll come up with something eventually. Uh, okay, I'm just going to scroll through the bottom. We can start to wrap this thing up. Uh, yeah, oh, boy, there's a lot of comments on here. Don't forget, guys, the new $10 Patreon level. We're going to be doing Hangouts on there. That'll be a lot easier because there'll just be a few of us talking at once. That will be all on video together. Uh, oh, my gosh. I am way behind on the comments. Okay. Uh, uh, Sandro says, Watching my channel calms his infant son. Well, I'm glad I could be of service that way. Why don't I just leave my glasses on? Because I can't see far with, I, can, I only need them for seeing up close, like the fine print, but everything else, then I'm, I'm nearsighted. So like far away, then I can't see. I wear contacts. So it's, it's a weird workaround. And so I'm gonna put them back on. Uh, what cameras and mics do I use when I'm filming? I use a, I can show it to you. This is, I just got this camera. This is a, a new one. It's just an upgrade from the one I had before. This is the Canon EOS Rebel T7i and a Rode video mic. I gotta get a new one though, cause this one's acting really weird and it's cutting out on me and stuff. Um, and that's that's my, sis, my setup. I have two, <clears throat> two lenses. This one was really important to me. This is the uh, 10 to 18 millimeter lens. Just because my shop is small and it's hard, I needed that wide angle lens just so that I could be in frame when I'm trying to show something. With my other lens, which is a longer zoom lens that came with the camera, I would have to put the camera real far away to get a wide enough shot. Uh, that's that's pretty much it. That's my camera system. Uh, hey, Captain Dan again. He says he has a two dollar. He has one of the two dollar award reward certificates hanging in his shop. That's cool. That's from the Patreon. I forgot about that. Yeah, with two dollar rewards, you get a woodworking for mere mortals official kind of certificate. You can print out and hang it in your shop. Um, Adam wants to know if I'm coming to Oklahoma for the video woodworkers. That's uh, Nick Ferry's thing. Yeah, I actually talked to him when I was here about it, but no, because that's, I'm pretty sure that's next week, and that's when I'm going to be down at VidCon. So I won't be there. And let me just take one or two more questions. Uh, okay, this is from, oh, this is also from Hornblower Tom. What, what tool would you recommend spending the most on when starting a new shop? I don't recommend spending a lot of money really on anything, but I think the, for me, the most important thing is a table saw and having, uh, having a kind of sort of a nicer table saw than the $100 versions helps a lot and just because it's the tool that gets to in my shop gets used all the time a lot of guys would say a bandsaw get a good bandsaw i just uh, i don't know i just like the way i can use the table saw it's so versatile
What do I think of Saw Stop <laughs> from Matt? <laughs> It's, uh, I guess it's a good saw. I don't know. I mean, if, if, if you're buying a table saw based on fear that you're scared, and so you think that that table saw is what you need, you're probably scared of a lot of things in your shop, and you probably need to rethink your strategy and, and not be so scared of, of things in your shop. Respect your tools, and you'll be fine. I've never had any problems with my table saw just because I, I really respect the power that it has and the ability to do damage to my body, so I'm super careful with it. Uh, but, you know, there's nothing wrong with getting a, a, a saw stop, because it, it will stop you from cutting your finger, or from cutting your finger off. But it's expensive, too. I, I just think, again, it's one of those things you gotta weigh that price versus risk versus reward ratio, is that what it's called? Okay, I am running out of steam here. Uh, uh, he's, this is from Quest for the Open Road. Hey, oh, actually, actually, it's for Wyatt. No need for a response live, but can you mention my idea of some kid and parent projects, a, kid and parent together appropriate projects as a cub master? He would like to see those. I have a couple of projects like that. Um, Older, older projects on my channel. Look for woodworking for kids, woodworking with kids, and I've got some recommendations on there. Simple pro. The, the key to working with kids is that their attention span is literally about 15 minutes. So you're gonna have to have almost everything done. My advice is to come up with a project that you've done most of the cutting and that they're gonna assemble it and paint it or whatever, but yeah, to get a kid into a shop longer than, because I've tried before, anything longer than 15 or 20 minutes, and it's just, it's hard, very difficult. They're just too into wanting to do other things. Okay. And... Uh, inspired Woodwork says, be respectful, but never fearful of your tools. Right. If, you, if you're scared of your tools, don't, don't use them. You really should not be scared. But being respectful is, is super important. And knowing what your tool, how your tool works, and what its potential of doing harm to you, how that part of it works is important too. For table saws, I really recommend looking at my table saw basics video because I have a large part of that is about table saw safety. And to me, the most dangerous part of a table saw is kickback. And knowing how to avoid kickback, I think is something that most people need to know because everybody's afraid of, of cutting their finger off. And a lot of that's been covered. People are very aware of that, but man, that kickback can put you in the hospital if a piece of wood just comes back right into your face or even into your stomach, I mean, you can do some serious harm. I mean, a chunk of wood coming out of a table saw comes out of there like at a million miles an hour. Something like that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jenny wants to know, am I going to join the other YouTubers moving bandwagon? I know, there's just, you know, a lot of people are moving their shops. No, I can't afford to move. I can't, I don't know how, how they do it. This is our, people call these your, uh, your like lifetime house or your forever house or something. I, I prefer to think of it as th we're living in our death house. <laughs> this, this is the house I'll probably die in. But I, I don't know, someday we may move. I don't even like to think about moving all this stuff in my shop. Ah, wow, Oliver says he's still waiting for the steampunk table saw. Maybe someday. He goes way back. That was my old table saw, my old craftsman table saw. I saved it for a long time because my idea was to make a more of an art piece. I don't think it would be a functional, but I wanted to make a steampunk table saw. I just, I like the notion of that. And, you know, put some, lots of 
like tubes and wires around this old table saw, but I never did get around to it. And the table saw sat there for so long and eventually I gave it away. So that, that idea never happened. Uh, okay, I think I'm going to wrap this up right now. Again, sorry everybody, I couldn't get to all of your comments. And Wyatt, thanks for moderating this. It was kind of crazy there at the beginning. There was a lot of spam and, and nonsense. And so we're, we'll still work out a way to do that. And I think it was because this live stream was unplanned. Usually when I have them planned on my Fridays, I can always get people to moderate them. So I'll take note of that for next time. Don't forget to fill out my woodworking survey. I'm really excited about coming up with this online course and I could really use your input. That's all I got for now. Remember, I don't have a video tomorrow. I'll be out of town and I will be back a little bit next week and hopefully of a project video next Friday. I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching.